This is Lecture 11e e for Calculus 2 on Power Series. The Power Series is a generic name for a series of this form. Find my marker here. Okay. Looks like this. It's an infinite series. Uh, let's let the variable be x, so it's x raised to the nth power and the index going from 0 to infinity. And the um, x is multiplied by a coefficient c. We mark it c to the n. So if you expanded this power series, you would have just a polynomial. Right? If all of these constants, c0, c1, c2, c3, were all equal to some constant we'll call c, you could factor it out, and you'd be left with a geometric, geometric series. Notice that you can start this. Um, okay. You can start this at n equals 0, or you can start it at n equals 1, but if you if you change the index, you just have to adjust the power of x. A more general form of the power series is, hmm, well, I don't know. I've got a problem getting, picking up all those weird markers. Let me try to get a better marker. There we go. Okay. This is a more general form of the power series. Here, instead of just x to the n, we have a noisy coffee pot. We have x minus x naught raised to the nth power. This is called a power series about x equal x naught. You might remember from calculus one, certain Taylor series were developed there without a lot of analysis, just developed there, and they could be the Taylor series about different values of x. So here this x naught represents different values of the Taylor uh, which the Taylor series expansion is constructed. Now this looks a little more complicated than what we had initially, which was I'll write it up here now. It was the sum c to the n, x to the n. So this is kind of going to the slant. All right. And now we have x minus x naught to the n. Right. This is a almost unnecessary complication since we can change this to by a change of variable let u equal x minus x naught with substitute that into our expression here for um, the more general power series. Then we can write the power series as um, c to the n, u to the n. So now we have a power series in u centered about zero, just like we had before where we had a power series of in x centered about zero. So it's we don't need to uh, to redo any of the theorems or anything that we develop here for the more general case of x minus x naught. We will just look at c to the n, x to the n, unless there is some specific reason for uh, for including a non-zero x naught. With the power series, we're dealing with an infinite series, so we always speak about convergence. Previously, when we talked about convergence, we wanted to know if that power series converged, converged to uh, a finite number. Otherwise, we said it diverges. Here, for example, the zeta function of 1 over n squared converges to pi squared over 6. It converges to a specific number. When we talk about the power in the Taylor series, though, we're not interested in converging to just any old finite number. We want it to converge to the values of a specific function that we're using the power or the Taylor series to to model. So what we're looking for here is a, is a little different look at convergence. We want it to converge to a function, to the values of the function. And here is the, is the basic theorem on the convergence of a power series. And this is what makes it so very useful. There are only three scenarios for the convergence of a power series. Either it converges at one value of x, or it converges in an interval about some value of x, or it converges everywhere. What this means is that I'm going to draw here um, in green a coordinate system. And let us say that the um, power series converges in an interval about some x. Let's say this x is uh, on 4. And it converges in this interval about 4. That means it converges at every x in this interval. Now imagine what it would be like if it converged at every x in this interval, and then maybe a little bit out here, and then maybe a little bit out here, and perhaps right in the middle, um, like right about here, it didn't converge. 
that would be very make it very complicated. So we have these three scenarios. Either it'll converge at a particular number, in this case a rope four here for it, or it converges in a interval, you can say a solid interval, about some value of x, or it'll converge everywhere. So now let's look at the power series. C n x raised to the nth power. The theorem that we had before in particular for this particular power series translates into this form. This power series will converge at x equals 0, or it will converge in some interval about x equals 0, or it will converge everywhere. If you have case 2, where it converges in an interval about x naught, x equals 0, the interval is represented by uh, some radius, by the, by the letter r, and that's called a radius of convergence. This is one-dimensional, it's not a circle, but it's still called a radius of convergence. At least it's not, it's one-dimensional here in what we're doing. So then 2 becomes the, uh, the power series converges for r in the interval, you know, minus r to r because it's converging about x equals 0. Now at the end point, you have to prove whether it, there's additional work to prove whether it converges at x equals minus r or not and whether it converges at x equals plus r or not. So depending on whether it converges at those endpoints, this interval could be open as it's written here. It could be closed if it converges at both endpoints, or it could be half, half open if it converges at only one of those endpoints. So again, for this power series about x equals 0, it converges at x equals 0. In an interval about x equals 0, that interval is described by the letter r, or denoted by the letter r, and that gives the radius, what's called the radius of, of convergence, about x equals x0. Right? And this is um, it's known to be an open interval, however, it could converge at the endpoints, and that has to be investigated separately. On the other hand, it can converge for all values of x. Now we can look at the power series c to the n um, quantity x minus x naught raised to the nth power. This, of course, is a power series centered about x naught, and we can translate what we know before into uh, for the convergence into this particular power series, and here's what the three scenarios are. It could converge at x equal x naught. It converges in an interval about x naught, or it converges for all values of x. For scenario two, for case two here, the interval is represented again by r, which is called the radius of curvature, and it's about x naught. So the power series then would converge in the interval right now, x naught minus r, x naught plus r. Right? At the endpoints where f x naught minus r and x naught plus r, that also that has to be investigated separately. It could converge at either one of those endpoints, at neither of those endpoints, or at only one of the endpoints. For this radius of curvature, the power series converges absolutely in this open interval x naught minus r to x naught plus r. Or in the case of the uh, other power series where x naught is 0, it converges absolutely in the open interval minus r to r. At the endpoints, it could converge either absolutely or conditionally. So how do we determine convergence? Well, for the power series itself, we use the ratio test to determine the radius of convergence. Then we can use what other other tests for the endpoints. For the Taylor series, we use what's called a remainder, and we'll discuss that in the uh, lectures on the Taylor series. Since we're going to use the um, ratio test, let's review it a little bit. The ratio test requires that all terms be non-negative. We can also use the absolute value to ensure that if we're looking for absolute convergence. Now, what we do is we look at the ratio of the terms, a n plus 1 over a to the n. We're taking the ratio of the terms of the sequence, of the series, I'm sorry. We take the limit as n goes to infinity. If that limit, we'll call the limit L. If L is less than 1, then we know that the series, the series converges. If L equals 1, this test can't determine it. The test is inconclusive. If L is greater than 1, then the series diverges. So this is the basis of the, um, this is a review of the ratio test.